I'm ready to say it on this Sunday, the 16th day of August 2015 worldwide broadcast. I'm ready to say it right now. I may have been wrong about Donald Trump because he is doing things right now politically. He is engaging in activities uh, that are not what a scripted, controlled candidate would do. He is causing the Clinton crime machine irrevocable harm on an absolutely massive scale. Now, I've said I've given him the benefit of the doubt because he's supported both parties in the past and owns casinos and has his own list of problems and has been part of WWE wrestling. But I've got friends that have been part of that. And we, we're right to not just trust people that are long-term politicians like Donald Trump. People think he's an outsider. He, he's a consummate insider. To a certain point, he's made his money, though, off the service economy and off of real estate and off of products, not off of central banking like the globalist. So when he comes out and says Hillary should step down from the campaign trail, that she has a criminal probe, that she's probably going to get indicted. I mean, these are the things that will destroy that so-called aura of invincibility that people like the Clintons have. It is a big, big deal. And there is a very good chance, not just intellectually or politically, but at my gut level, that Hillary Clinton is about to fall. And man, it couldn't happen sooner. And I really was watching uh, different Sunday morning news shows, Meet the Press, Face the Nation this morning, trying to monitor their propaganda. I mean, I wasn't tuning in to learn anything from their lies. That is from them, from the perspective they were pitching the propaganda, but from how they were spinning, how they were behaving. And uh, they showed some footage on one of the shows of Democrats meeting at Martha's Vineyard, playing golf. And I've watched a lot of footage of presidents and their minions play golf. Clinton looks like he's the walking dead and like he's a concentration camp victim not long for this world. Maybe you get your soul sucked out at some point. That's how Al Sharpton looks too, and he's been around a while. Uh, and Obama looks like hell. Hillary looks like hell. They all look completely insane. I mean, if I saw Bill Clinton walking down the street, I'd say that's a mentally ill, insane person. I mean, he looks like a Heaven's Gate cult leader or something. I mean, look at him in the photo if you're watching this on TV. I mean, that's a Fruit Loop right there. And in my Fruit Loop, there's no life in him. So I think there's big shakeups in the power structure because there's two different economies. There's billionaires and millionaires and middle class and working class folks that are based on free market that want prosperity, that want wealth, that want an economy that's healthy because they're the type of rich that gets hurt by an economy not doing well. Then there's the globalists who control all the currency and credit and have unlimited fake wealth who are at war with other wealth they don't control, who want poverty to control people. And there's the big fight between those two different groups. I mean, you can boil it down to free market capitalist and crony neo-feudal capitalist. You can put any different labels you want on it all day long. That's what's going on. So ultra huge news on that front. We've got all the clips coming up and more. Then we've got some really good news. Arkansas becomes the fourth state to defund Planned Parenthood after it sells aborted babies. We're seeing implosion-level events by the globalists right now. Uh, STEM Express that was buying the baby parts from uh, the Eugenics Society, now known as Planned Parenthood, is cutting ties and not buying the goods anymore. So huge, huge positive news on that front. Uh, we've got uh, the latest on police chief sheriffs blast ice over policy they say freeze violent illegal immigrants the law actually does not give us the right to place an ice hold uh, we'll get into the latest on the economy cuba syria japan has a big volcano getting ready to go off right next to a nuclear power plant so we have another fukushima on our hands why do you build these plants on fault lines tsunami lines and volcanic rifts i mean japan's a very active uh, tectonic country mother houses are made out of paper I mean, why do we build all the reactors there? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Alex Jones, coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas, Austin, broadcasting on different formats worldwide, reaching 20 million people a week one way or another. I am extremely honored uh, to be your host and to uh, be working with the great reporters and the folks behind the scenes and the uh, anchors 
for InfoWars Radio and InfoWars TV. Find all the details at InfoWars.com forward slash show. And certainly please send that link on to friends and family. You are the main engine of the success of this Americana constitutional renaissance pro-freedom, pro-prosperity message to make humanity great again, not just America. I'm going to say it right here on air. I am rarely wrong in a big way. Very rarely. But sometimes I am. I mean, I get dates wrong and sometimes say a guest's name wrong or sometimes flip facts around in my head. We all do that in a busy world. I'm teleprompter free. You can write news articles and you're going to have typos and problems sometimes. This isn't all, you know, written up prefab. This is research. This is passion. This is a world understanding, but it is unscripted. So there's mistakes, but I rarely fundamentally misgauge major geopolitical movements and national movements. Because I've been doing this 23 years on air over 20. And I've learned who the players are, who the different clubs are, who the different power structures are. And in the last 20 plus years, it's been the same group of players, several different camps, but globalist all the same, that have been in control. And I've learned how Zbigniew Brzezinski runs a White House. I've learned how a Henry Kissinger advises a White House. I've learned how a George Schultz runs an operation. Uh, I've learned how a James Baker runs an operation. I've learned how a David Gergen runs an operation. And these are the people that go and talk to the major shareholders of the corporate world government and then who come and basically tell the White House and the congressional leaders how the cow ate the cabbage. And then if you know where those people are going and what they want and what their agenda is, you'll know what they're going to pull before it even happens. That said, before I get into my correction here today, and again, I would be happy to be completely wrong because it would change my worldview about things. I'm only partially wrong, and I think it's important for all of us to realize that the closer we get to something, the more knowledge we have about it and the more wisdom we have at one level, but also you can get so close to the abyss, to quote Nietzsche, that you become the abyss and you become too cynical. Because for all the complexity in the world and all the globalist tools of social engineering, still they're not gods, they're not in total control. And when people are promoting freedom, when they are promoting ideas that are so popular and so transcendent, it's going to catch on, especially when things start to get tyrannical. That's why tyrants always seek to shut down opposition, because they know opposition is going to be popular when things get rough. Now, what am I getting at here? <sighs> Donald Trump owns casinos. I don't really like gambling, especially at an industrial scale. I think it chumps people. But I'm a libertarian, so if you want casinos, go ahead and have them. Doesn't mean I have to agree with them. I gamble in other ways. For liberty and freedom, I gamble with my life, my name, my treasure. I don't gamble at some mafia organization or some big multinational corporation's tables when the deck is stacked, when the tables uh, are slanted. So he's involved in casinos, and I don't like that. Uh, but he's involved in a lot of other free market activities I think are admirable and fine, and I admire people that have basically been successful by the sweat of their brow. Uh, on the scale of billionaires, he's one of the poorest, worth about $4 billion. He hides a lot of his wealth. He's probably worth $20 billion. And, and even Forbes says that. Uh, the real power of this world is worth $100 billion apiece, people like Bill Gates, most of his wealth is hidden. Uh, the Queen of England's wealth is a state secret. So is the Queen of the Netherlands. These people are worth trillions. So are the Rothschilds. So what I'm getting at there is Donald Trump is not in the upper echelons of power. If you go out in national studies, and they've done them in Man on the Street interviews, most people in America believe Donald Trump is the richest man. 
And that's because he's had TV shows, drama shows, reality shows, wrestling shows. For 30 years, he's been on the scene as Richie Rich, his daddy, with all of his European wives and all the rest of it. And hosting the Miss America contest and whatever. So he is Americana. You can say what you want about him. He is Americana, kind of rock starish. He plays golf with the Clintons. He hangs around them. Uh, he's given the Democrats more money than Republicans. I get his statement about having to do business as a corporate owner. You have to give to both parties or they destroy you. That's pretty much true. What he's been saying the last three months since he got in the campaign has been spot on. He's been demonized and attacked. So if you don't defend his ideas, whether he stands for them or not, you're letting the enemy win by building a straw man. So I've defended him on that front. And, you know, Jesse Ventura has even said he's, quote, shaking the political system to its core. We've got Ventura coming on next week. But that said, it didn't mean I trusted Donald Trump, but I left it open. But I said on air, I think he helps Hillary Clinton. He helps distract away from all the other Republican candidates like Rand Paul and others that was the front leader just three months ago. And if he drops out or runs his third party, he will then checkmate the Republicans and ensure a Democrat gets in like Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, who's now saying he may enter the race. So if he leaves the third party, he'll get the Democrats in. If he is a shill for Hillary and falls on a sword and starts making a bunch of really stupid statements or drops out, we know he's a shill. He'll be anathema. His name will be dirt. He hadn't really attacked the Clintons yet or Jeb Bush. Who we know the Clintons and the Bushes definitely vacation together. They call each other, you know, brothers and sisters. Uh, Bush Sr.'s wife calls Clinton her son. I mean, it's sick. They're involved in corrupt charities together. You know, where half the money goes to their, their luxury jets and hotels and houses. I mean, it's a sick mess. So we know the Bushes and the Clintons are in it together, totally staged. I've been watching Trump, and I'm here to tell you. When I say I'm wrong, I, I was just saying I don't trust him, but I hope he's for real. What he's doing now and watching his body language and everything he's doing, he's running to win. He is saying Hillary needs to step down, is probably going to be indicted and is basically a criminal. He is saying that this email thing is a big deal and a cover-up. If he was working with them, he wouldn't be doing that because these are broadside torpedoes, and Hillary is starting to sink right now. Praise God. This is irrevocable damage, irrevocable what he started doing on Friday. I almost came in to do a special report. It's so important. And this is probably the end of Hillary. All of her hubris, her arrogance, I don't want to say she's down yet till she goes beneath the waves. But she's on fire. Her magazine is exploding. You know, her armaments on board have caught fire. She is sinking fast. I mean, she is going down fast. Clinton looks like he's dying. Her husband, her, her beard, which I'm not against her that she's a lesbian. It's just that her daughter's not, you know, it's just all staged. Webster Hubble's daughter, you know. She's seen more women than a, than a you know, a pink um, bicycle seat. I mean, you know, it, it's, you know, the whole point is that this is a day to remember the Clinton dynasty is circling the toilet bowl. Uh, this is just so beautiful. Thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, my cupcake. And this is the Sunday transmission. We're live every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Back weekdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central time as well. Infowars.com is the main site. Backed up by PrisonPlanet.com, the Facebook, the Twitter, the YouTube channels, PrisonPlanet.tv, and more. So I have all this other world news. It's all very important. The good news, the bad news, the ugly news. But here are just the stack of articles today many of which are up on InfoWars.com with extended videos detailing how big a deal this is to have Donald Trump doing what he's doing. Because I can tell, you can tell, a $3 bill from pretty far away. And the fact that Trump is now eviscerating Hillary and Jeb Bush, the fact that he is now 
basically saying she's a criminal and telling her to step down. The fact that Biden is preparing to enter the race shows the Clintons are falling apart in front of us. It's so wonderful. And it's not some personal vendetta I have with them. This is a very dangerous criminal duo. And I'm personally on their enemies list. That's been in the newspapers. Hundreds of other people are. I've been persecuted. I'm sick of them. They're a particularly nasty group. They've been running Obama the whole time. And the fact that they're in deep trouble could not be more deserved. I mean, it would be a devastating victory for this country if both of them got indicted. Because they're both involved in crimes that go around the world. But here are the headlines. Trump on Clinton emails. It's a criminal probe. We're going to play a clip of that in a moment. That's from CNN. An incredibly bold statement. Trump better watch it in his helicopters and jets. Because, and by the way, I'm not saying Trump's ever been perfect. But he makes his money again off the free market being successful and the country being wealthy. And if he is an actor, he's even better than Obama. He looks seriously concerned when he talks about loss of jobs, when he talks about the country rotting. He's the type of peacock, it's not bad to be a narcissist peacock, who wants to be great. I mean, uh, there were a lot of Caesars in Rome where they had big booms, where the Caesar actually wanted to have free market and wealth and power and public works projects and didn't want to suppress the middle class and, and wasn't jealous of having a middle class. And I don't think Donald Trump is afraid of success for the people. The Cloward and Piven insider Ford Foundation Clinton types want you poor so they can control you. And when Trump says cut taxes by 40% and more tax money will come in, the, the average person doesn't understand. When you cut taxes massively, it increases tax receipts because people start building. They start spending. They start investing. They start. It's a fact. Kennedy cut taxes by 50% in the main tax bracket. Biggest boom this country's seen post-World War II. And the deficit went down. Okay, I've read one headline. Trump on Clinton emails, it's a criminal problem. So th there becomes a point where whether Trump's good or bad, what he's doing is, as, as the number one media person in the country now, getting all this attention, he is destroying Hillary Clinton. Put, putting it over the top as all this comes out and then giving everybody cover to go after her. Because if you individually go after them, they come after you. But if everybody goes after them, they can be destroyed. And then that scares all the other crooks to not be so arrogant. Trump on Clinton emails, it's a criminal probe. Hillary, we're going to play this clip, putting on her con game. And I've told you the arrogance is because they're scared. That's meant to put the perception on everything's fine, keeping up appearances. Hillary on Snapchat, I love how messages disappear all by themselves and her sickening, fawning, totalitarian cult members giggle and laugh. And the media admits she's rubbing it in everyone's face with a confidence game. I saw hundreds of headlines when I searched her quote today for the show. It was just hundreds of headlines. I only scanned 20 of them or so, all going you know, Hillary makes jokes about disappearing emails. Hillary arrogantly, you know, puts on a good face. And you're like, okay, anybody can tell that. Used to, mainstream media wouldn't call her out. See, now it's safe. Most people in the system don't like the corruption. They're scared, though. What did Mark Twain say? My favorite quote. In the beginning, a patriot is a scarce man, hated, feared, and scorned. But in time, when his cause succeeds, the timid join him because then it costs nothing to be a patriot. Infowars' job, Drudge's job, World Net Daily's job, and others like that, our job as constitutional libertarian types is to tell it like it is against both parties, hit the barbed wire, and make it safe for other people to follow behind us. That's what leadership is. Doing the right thing no matter what other people think about you. And look how it continues to pay off. For getting the truth out. And now look at Trump engaging in real leadership. And I know it's his constituents putting heat on him. Hillary on Snapchat, we're going to play that. Donald Trump, it would be a miracle if Hillary continues to run. NBC News, I've got that clip. Exclusive, Donald Trump expects to face VP Joe Biden in general election. Hillary Clinton's big league email scandal will force her out. I just love it. 
Uh, Joe Biden said to be considering one-term presidency. Boom. Number of Hillary emails flagged for classified data grows to 60 as review continues. Petraeus was indicted and had to plea bargain to felonies to a suspended prison sentence for talking to his girlfriend about classified stuff that didn't matter. I'm not defending Petraeus, but literally, literally, he, he, he had like a little bit of milk dripped on his tie or a little ketchup, and they tried to put him in prison for it. And then this woman takes money from third world dictators at the State Department to her foundation and then removes the export ban on heavy weapons. You know, anti-tank missiles. Amazing. So there's some of the news on that front. It begins, actually it didn't begin. I saw these a year ago. I meant to put a t-shirt out that said it. We're going to do it. It begins, Hillary for prison signs spotted in Missouri. Yeah, they're popping up all over. In fact, I'm going to emergency print up Hillary for prison signs 2016 and, and, and bumper stickers, and we're going to sell them at cost. So I months ago told the crew to do this. I don't, I don't know if the production crew ever ever did it. They may have even done it. But we're going to put these out because I, I, I saw it months ago, a guy in Austin driving around with one. Absolutely. And, and if a Republican acts like this, we're going to put out, you know, Jeb Bush for prison signs if he does stuff like this. There's a new national poll out. And The Hill was reporting on a majority of Americans believe she lied about having sensitive national intelligence on her private email server. Yeah, why did the head of the EPA, remember her a few years ago had to step down? She had a gnome de plume, a pen name with secret emails. They engage in secret emails and use code names like Hillary was using because they're engaged in criminal activity outside of the four-year system. We're going to go to break. When we come back, I'm going to play Donald Trump on Clinton email. Says it's a criminal problem. Donald Trump goes on to then say it'd be a miracle if she continues to run. And then Hillary making the sickening joke about her disappeared uh, emails. I mean, she professionally wiped the hard drives because the stuff's all still really on there. So she had it professionally wiped. That's called felony obstruction of justice. Four to ten years in federal prison on its face for each email she erased to abscond justice. In a moment, I will give you my bottom line on Donald Trump and what I think may be happening. But he definitely has been pushed by the mainstream media as a anti-candidate, someone to be discrediting to conservative libertarian ideas. That has backfired massively. And now he is basically jumping in against Clinton and against uh, Jeb Bush at a time, for me, that points towards the fact that he may be for real. But regardless, his rhetoric is damaging the globalist agenda right now, something a staged candidate would not be doing. So what's really behind this? We'll break down what I think is going on and play these clips here in a moment. First off, it was sold out for quite a while. It's one of our best sellers, if not the best seller, depending on the month. And that's super male vitality, five years of research, uh, 10 plus known concentrated cold pressed organic herbs that help your body produce and release uh, the key compounds that you need to have stamina, libido, energy, you name it. Uh, all I can say is uh, the effects of super male vitality now being on it for a year plus Again, many years before that in development with top researchers, uh, chemists, uh, herbologists, and others, it's been life-changing. And similar formulas that aren't even as good and use dry herbs are upwards of twice as much, generally about 70% more. So it's very, very competitively priced. It's available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And we have uh, the third-party review system, one of the most highly respected uh, review sites out there. You can link through and read the 5.0 reviews. Most of the reviews are five-star. The overall average is 4.8 for all of the InfoWarsLife.com products. The overall score for Supermail is 4.9 stars. And we have links to other uh, third-party uh, respected reviews 
review sites, and you've heard the callers. Here's what Wolf Castle in Aberdeen, Scotland had to say. I use this every day as reduced uh, cramp after cycle. Cycling 20 miles a day. I also use the iodine and the combination improvement in stamina is at least 10% boost compared to before when using Supermel Vitality and X2. Great combo. Highly recommend. That review came in just a few days ago on the 12th. Uh, here is a, another review from John in Kalispell, Montana. I know the male vitality is supposed to help with my energy, but what it really seems to do most for me is help me remember things. I'm always rushing around with a million things to do. This helps keep me uh, on track of what I'm doing. Also kind of helps me slow down a bit uh, with the task I do so I don't get all frenzies and rush too fast. Interesting stuff. Yes, I would recommend it to a friend. The effects are different for different people, but the big one everybody notices is uh, what happens in the morning when you wake up about 6 a.m. And I'm just telling you that, um, I'll just be honest with people, I don't need Cialis or Viagra, but as a man, 41 years old, you know, I went to the doctor, had a checkup a year ago, whatever, and they just say, you want some? And I said, sure, I'll try it. And I have bottles of both Cialis and Viagra that I never used, I'll just be honest. Uh, I mean, I used a few of them because it doesn't have the effect Supermel does. And I don't need Supermel either. It's just it takes it to the next level. Uh, and let's not be a bunch of kids here. If you're like, oh, my gosh, he's talking about, you know, libido pills. That's just a idea of what it does for everything else. Because that's not really why I take it. But I was curious when the doctor offered it. I have a prescription for both. Uh, well, okay. I mean, I really noticed the difference with Supermel. Dr. Group said I would. I wonder what this does. See, Super Male does more than that does for me, but my face doesn't turn bright red. I mean, you take a Viagra, it looks like, you know, you turn into red. Uh, so all I'm saying is this is serious stuff. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. Brain Force uh, came back in, but it will be sold out by tomorrow. We're down to just the last 10% of the bottles, and we'll have more coming in two weeks if you want that, InfoWarsLife.com as well. Your purchase of the products helps fund this independent media organization. Please support all our AM and FM affiliates as well, or become a local sponsor, and whatever you do, spread the word about the broadcast. Okay, here's what's going on with Donald Trump. He goes back to the founding of our country. Why do we have three branches of government? Because the founders knew that cliques, gangs, strongmen, Napoleon Bonaparte types, Hitler types, King George types, William the Conqueror types, Julius Caesar types, Conqueror types would try to come in. If there was one branch, they could take it over. But if you set up other people in control of other powerful branches, they would tend to compete with each other and use the Constitution as checks on the other. And that because we have three centers of government, that would not allow a dictatorship to form. Now, the bureaucracy and the CIA above the law and the National Security Act of 47 and the media being bought off by big corporations, that's kind of been checked. But not checkmated, but still it acts. And somebody like Donald Trump that's got four-plus billion dollars, tens of billions in other assets, who makes his money off having a rich economy, off people vacationing, people buying products, people buying nice condos, houses, he gets hurt by an economy shutting down. The fact that he has to say, make America great again, shows how much freedom we've lost and that we really know we're in a long, cold depression. And he speaks to that. He says, look, our borders are wide open. We don't have good negotiators. Everybody can come here and have babies for free and criminals can come here. It's wrong. I'll turn things around. I'll cut taxes by 40%. That's all true. That would work if he's for real. But then he goes after Hillary Clinton, the rest of it. Clearly now, for whatever reason, they thought it was a joke at first. And he still may be blackmailed. It may be a setup. But listen, he could be president now. He is the hands-down front runner. If, Rand, if he would work with somebody like Rand Paul, that'd bring in a lot of anti-war Democrats. Um... 
He better not double cross people or I tell you, he is going to be in big trouble. He will be boycotted. People will come after him politically. But regardless, he's going after the Clintons now, which is a big deal. Let's go ahead and go to one of these clips, but it's the separation of powers. Trump wants to be president. And there's been a lot of leaders in history that weren't perfect, but they wanted to have a big, powerful country under them. That's more like a boss hog management instead of wanting everybody poor to control them. And the Trump type doesn't want a bunch of poor people under him. He wants wealthy people. He wants success. He is a capitalist at the end of the day. He's totally different than, you know, Barack Obama and a Cloward and Piven. Let's bankrupt people and make them dependent on us. And I'm not lionizing him saying he's perfect. Again, he says arrest Snowden, execute him. He's a traitor. He's got some major problems. But it's night and day, and it shows how the country's upset. Let's go to this first clip. We'll come back with the rest. This is Trump on Clinton emails saying she has a criminal problem. This is bold, folks. He, this means he's really going after him. He's really running for president because this just won't get him in the lead, which he's already in the lead, and, and, and then he can drop out later for Hillary. This will destroy her if he gets on board with all his supporters calling for criminal prosecution because it'll make it safe for other people to do it. Then there's nowhere for her to hide. This is epic. Here's the clip. All the way, man. She said that her emails are not a general election problem. She said her emails are not. A, it's a partisan concern. Is she wrong about that? It's a criminal practice. It's going to be a very serious problem for her. It's going to be about as serious as it gets. If you look at General Petraeus, and he was destroyed over a much lesser event. So... I think she's got a very big problem. But his emails were marked classified. Hers were not. Well, I think some of hers were. And it seems like they took a lot of markings off. I mean, somebody has got a big problem with it. looks like it's Hillary. Any worry Republicans could overplay their hand on this email controversy? Yes. It is what it is. It was a terrible thing she did. It was actually a reform. There was no reason to do it. And she's got a big problem. Have you talked to Bill Clinton since, man? All right, that's enough. Now, when we come back, we've got Hillary Clinton making jokes about all this. And we got another Donald Trump clip, even more powerful. So, I'm not here saying Donald Trump's an angel. I'm not saying I even trust him. But he's doing things, and he's not stupid, that will hurt Jeb Bush and hurt Hillary. He was being pretty uh, softball with them before. Now he's attacking them. Uh, he is uh, jumping on the bandwagon. I mean, that's just one clip we played. There's like six or seven he's on, on national TV this weekend saying she needs to step down. She needs to drop out of the race. They're going to put Biden in against him. Again, that's his statement. Biden is clearly preparing to jump into the race. It certainly appears. And here's Donald Trump saying it would be a miracle if Hillary continues to run. Absolutely. Since when are you caught in Benghazi, caught with classified emails, Caught in Fast and Furious, caught helping persecute the Tea Party with the IRS, all the other scams you're involved in. And then Bernie Sanders comes out and says it's sexist that people don't like Hillary. Hillary's never done anything in her life but work in government. Hillary in the Vince Foster episode, the cattle futures, Hillary care. Going after our guns, promoting open borders, lying incessantly. We're sick of you. We're sick of the race baiting. And now she's always out saying, you know, women are downtrodden, vote for her. You know, she's the outsider. She'll fight the big corporations when she's bought and paid for them. I mean, Bernie Sanders came out last Monday and said, any criticism is sexist. He said, there's nothing legitimate about criticism of Hillary, that she's a nice person. He likes her. I mean, that's just a sick joke because she's a woman. I'm not supposed to say she's a crook. So let's go to Donald Trump just continues to get more hardcore. And I worry about his safety. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this clip. And when Bill Clinton called me, I had already made up my decision, you know, just so you understand. Uh -huh. He called me long after I had made a decision okay. and everyone knew I was running. So it wasn't like that. And I think he's very disappointed that I'm running because I'm the one person that's going to beat her. Now, I think she may not be able to run, to be honest, because this whole email thing is a horrible thing. General Petraeus, his life has been destroyed, and he did 5% of what she did. So assuming she's able to run, which would be absolutely, to me, a miracle at this point, mm -hmm. I will beat her. And I don't see the other people 
that call, are running against me currently. You regularly winning. call her the worst Secretary of State. I think she's so the beg, worst beg, Secretary of State in the history of our country. Look what beg, happened. It, well, it the begs the question. I'm a history buff. Who was the worst before her then in your mind? Well, I'll tell you who's the worst after her. Kerry, because right, of what, I mean, the, who, look, would, who do you believe was I, the worst I don't want to get her. into names. Well, I, no, because... I'm insulting Chuck. I'm insulting so many people. I don't want to insult people. I want to be nice I to I understand people. that, but it goes to this larger, everything with you is the best or the worst. No, it's There's not no that. nuance. Chuck, during her reign, who? the entire world fell apart. It fell apart. During her reign, the entire world, look what happened. Everything fell apart. So the Arab Nothing Spring is on her? Is that a well, fair I thing? You put the sort of, on her? I mean, you could sort of say maybe a little bit, right? I mean, sort of, right? That's a big but, charge. But look at, look at, look at Kerry. Why do looks matter to you so much? You talk about it a lot. I don't think they look. They matter. Is so that going to matter in who you hire as a cabinet secretary? No, no, not at okay. all. No, I, I don't know why you say. I mean, oh, I own Miss enough. Universe. I own Miss Universe. And of course, the reporter, who's a former White House operative is trying to stump him knowing that even if you're a history buff when you when they say who's the next worst secretary of state knowing you probably can't pull it out of your head even though you're like well back in history who was a bad one and then you think of some of the people that were bad and so trump just jumps right to well carrie's even worse i mean trump's really smart and he dumbs his message down though for the lowest common denominator Hillary quarterbacked the Arab Spring. They sent al-Qaeda into Libya, into Syria. They gave them the weapons. That's come out in the news. You heard that here first five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. But it's now come out in the news. And if Trump starts talking about that, I'll get behind him. I mean, he's, he's almost got me there now because, again, it doesn't matter whether he's sincere or not. What he's doing, what he's, it's like, like if you dump gasoline on somebody and lit them on fire. You say, are, are you sincere about dumping gasoline on me and lighting me on fire? It doesn't matter. You light them on fire, they're going to burn up. I mean, he's burning Hillary down. He's doing a bunch of other stuff that he's not apologizing. He's saying, make America great again. Cut taxes by 40% for working class people. It'll increase the tax receipts. Uh, he won't let China have these different tariffs on us. It's a tariff when they lower their yuan, all the rest of it. I mean, he really is giving us the treatment in his prognosis that would help the country. And I just hope he gives the cover for the other cowards in the Republican Party lineup to get out there and get hardcore. Because... Republican candidates always tie their hands behind their backs and try to sound like Democrats during elections. That's not what people want. People want lower taxes. They want fair trade. They don't want free trade where it's one-sided trade agreements. And they want sovereignty back. And they want a president who's confident and who doesn't apologize and who doesn't back down and who isn't a coward. I mean, no nation is a nation that doesn't have borders. I've got a stack of news about violent felony illegals pouring in from Eastern Europe, Africa, Latin America, everywhere, just murdering people. Every day I have a stack of it. And they spin it like, oh, you don't like foreigners. I love most foreigners. A lot of them are hardworking people. But when you can come here and be, have, it be, have any ID you want, when you can come to the United States and take on any identity you want, this is where criminals run. Americans run to Mexico because it's the place that used to not have extradition and, and, and let you know murderers go down there. So, I mean, nobody debates that. It's not racist to say that Americans run to Mexico, whether they're Hispanic, black, white, whatever. It's a fact. Well, the whole world runs here. And then they won't even let the police departments and sheriff's departments deliver them to ICE to be deported and they commit crime after crime, mainly, well, not mainly, but per capita, the largest portion. That'd be more than 50% to be mainly, but the largest percentage of those against other immigrants. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of them here. Police chiefs, sheriffs blast ICE over policy. They say freeze violent illegal immigrants. The law actually does not give us the right to place an ICE hold. That's Fox News up on Infowars.com. Here's another one. Uh, this one went on Drudge Report Friday. Illegal alien arrested for extremely violent triple homicide in Florida. Police, all homicide scenes are normally violent, but this scene is what we considered unimaginable. And then 
off the police report, Adon Salazar, writing for Infowars.com, breaks it down. He had fled his third world country where he had fled a double decapitation. You can read the whole article. It was at Bolivia. And then he got up here and chopped up a bunch of other people, including his cousin. Oh, but see, it doesn't matter he killed his Hispanic cousin and some other Hispanics because that's not racist because he was Hispanic. That's what I mean. It's just crazy town. The brutal deaths of a grandmother, two teens in Florida earlier this week, have been pinned on the illegal alien who crossed the Texas-Mexico border. Police at Fort Myers arrested Bolivian national Brian Omar Haida, 19, Tuesday, driving on the wrong side of the road with no license and blood on his clothes and body. I guess normally you're allowed to drive on the wrong side of the road if you're an illegal alien. Uh, the Lee County Sheriff's Office suspects Hyde, and, and it goes on, and it says Bolivia wanted him, and he fled for robbing a cell phone store and chopping two people's heads off. I shouldn't laugh. I, I just, I mean, just, you got like billions of people around the world. And when folks commit a murder in China, they'll put the body in a freezer or bury it and jump on an airplane over here. Or serial killers from Mexico, they come here. And then they live in the immigrant neighborhoods, if it's Chinese or Russian or or or, or uh, Nigerian is a big group of criminals. I'm not saying Nigerians are criminals, but there's a large criminal contingent, and they come and feed on Nigerian communities. I mean, hell, there's a Nigerian mafia in Austin. I've learned about operating, and it, it just it, it, I'm supposed to go. Oh, you're another culture. Let me bow down here. Scam me. I I, I want to bow to you so I can live in a third world country. You know, Hillary said so. Uh, it's just crazy. So Donald Trump's telling the truth. So it doesn't matter who he is individually. I mean, I mean, I mean. Here's an analogy. It's like a neon sign, a giant neon sign in Vegas. You can see from a mile away. It doesn't matter what's powering the sign, whether it's a hundred guys on bicycles or a power plant. It's electricity firing that sign up. You can see it. It's the message that matters. It is the perception, because in politics, that becomes reality. And th there's no way what Donald Trump's doing helps the establishment. I think Donald Trump sees an opportunity. I think he's going for it. I think he may be for real. And I think they may blow his airplane or helicopter out of the sky. Second hour coming up. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info. I'm going to give the phone number out to talk all things election 2016. Donald Trump, the economy, world events, abortion. We've got some really positive news on that front, all coming up in the next segment. But John Bound cut another report. The full video is at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com, talking about a real solution that we discussed last week with Congressman Walter Jones. And that's remove Speaker John Boehner from the Speaker of the House position. This is just as important as getting a good president elected. Here it is. If nothing's going to change, I don't know how we ever expect to win. John Boehner, the whimpering poster boy for the left-right paradigm and its inner corporate mechanizations. The man that oversees the shameful backdoor deals rampant in the nation's capital that have spiraled out of control and, and spilled out into the main streets of America. Needs to be fired. He's nothing but a low-down, double-dealing, backstabbing, larcenous, perverted world. Too good for him. Burning's too good for him. Representative Mark Meadows, a Republican from District 11 in North Carolina, introduced House Resolution 385 on July 28th. The resolution requires 29 Republican members of the House to vote to vacate the chair. The Republican Speaker of the House, John Boehner, would then need to beg Democrats to save his treasonous skin. This action has never succeeded in the House and has only been attempted once, 105 years ago. So why should we fire John Boehner? Well, the Mark Meadows resolution lists a number of grievances. A few of those include Boehner caused the power of Congress to atrophy, thereby making Congress subservient to the executive and judicial branches. Boehner is using the power of the office to punish members who 
vote according to their conscience instead of the will of the speaker. John Boehner used his political ally, Oversight Chairman Jason Chavitz, to punish Meadows by releasing him of his subcommittee chairmanship for voting against the procedural motion to fast-track the TPP. But Chavitz and Boehner couldn't bully Meadows out of his chair after conservatives rallied strong disapproval. Boehner is making it abundantly clear. Speak the will of the American people and you will be punished. Other grievances include providing for voice votes on consequential and controversial legislation to be taken without notice and with few members present. Another grievance reads, John Boehner does not comply with the spirit of the rules, which provide that members shall have three days to review legislation before voting. The American people can't even see what's in the TPP. Uh, in the House, the American people's priorities continue to be our priorities. Free trade is good for jobs. Uh, it's good for America's farmers, manufacturers, and small businesses. Uh, trade votes are never a, an easy lift around here, but Republicans uh, are continuing to work, uh, and we're seeing some positive uh, momentum in the right direction. And remember when Nancy Pelosi said this. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Any of your listeners, whatever state they might be in, if they would call their member of Congress, all of them are home now for the next three, four weeks, actually, and call them and ask them to tell the person that answers the phone to remind that congressman that he or she could join in this resolution to vacate the chair. And if we can get enough votes, what will happen, we will have a straight up or down vote on who the next speaker, speaker should be to replace John Bain. The H, -Con Res H Resolution 385 is now in the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee will be the committee that will determine to send this back to the full House, meaning back to the floor of the House, for a vote. Every member sitting on the floor of the House will have a chance to vote uh, to vacate the chair, and then that would mean there would be another vote for the Speaker of the House uh, and it would be a new person if that happened. So that's where it is. Combat that lingering feeling of defeat we Americans have endured daily for years. Make your voice heard. Call, email, or personally ask your representative to vacate the chair. This is your country. It doesn't belong to blubbering traitorous scum like John Boehner. Fire John Boehner. Resist the tyranny. This is how our founders set up the system for peaceful revolution. John Bound for Infowars.com. Excellent job, John Bound. Absolutely. That video, Fire John Boehner, is on Infowars.com. Get it. Get it out to your friends and family. Coming up, I had a caller on the Friday show call in, and it was basically, you know, don't talk bad about David Duke. You ought to have David Duke on the show. And, of course, folks probably know who David Duke is, former Grand Wizard, presidential candidate, Louisiana state rep. And it's just so low level when you get a phone call. I'm going to play a clip of Hillary, but I'm going to play this David Duke clip. Saying, why are you covering up for the Jews? Why are you covering up for the Vatican? Why are you covering up for the Masons? Just just give me a break. Okay, you can cover what you want. You can be obsessed with what you want. I want to talk about free market. I want to talk about cutting taxes. I want to talk about being able to choose where your kids go to school and just basic freedom. I'm not into obsessing over what color people are all day. I attack political correctness for obsessing over color and trying to make us fight with each other. I see the Democrats and the Ku Klux Klan as being very close in their policies to each other. Totally race-based. They're just forming minority groups into modern Hispanic and black Klan groups. So they can control them. And we haven't heard back from Duke two days later. I'm sure we will. Because I know he does a lot of interviews. I see him on national TV and the rest of it. But the reason I decided to talk about this today was... I saw comments on InfoWars, and then I saw them in emails yesterday. Alex, you're a liar. David Duke never said anything bad about you, blah, blah, blah. You know, there you go, trying to make yourself a big man, like I'm a big man that David Duke's talked about me. I mean, I've been talked about by BBC, Nightline, CNN, MS. I've been, been bad-mouthed by MSNBC probably 500 times that I know of. 
But to these folks that worship David Duke, it's like Jesus talked about me or something. Whatever. I'll have him on the show and I'll give him my worldview. I'm just sick and tired of it because what I said about David Duke was he's basically like a Mecha or La Raza leader. And so I don't get why he gets attacked for being a white supremacist when all these other groups are white supremacists or black supremacists or Hispanic supremacists and the Democratic Party founded the Ku Klux Klan. So I get he's the designate bad guy who's demonized all day. And if you're going to have a bunch of other racist groups, why not have the white racist groups? Because if the other groups are going to be racist and hate white people, I understand folks has moved to then get into their own separate group. The point is there's something above that manipulating us into a divide and conquer strategy. And that's what I'm trying to expose. I mean, I can play the clips where Louis Farrakhan talks about me. Uh, I'm not bragging when I... In fact, I never even play these clips. So then I get emails going, no, Louis Farrakhan never talked about you. Or, or you know, Bill Clinton never talked about you. Or Janet Reno never talked. I, it isn't about me being talked about. I don't have to prove myself. I have 20 million listeners a week. I still have weirdos in the street. I was on the hike and bike trail today jogging, and I'd stopped. I'd gotten back up to the top of the trail, and there were three guys hiking bikers. Some of them were hiking, some were biking. I thought they were together. And they're like, oh, the black helicopter's going to get you down there. We're surprised you're, you know, you, you've got the courage to go down in there. And I had some other guy ask me about black helicopters. I just said, don't you have anything but a cliche? Like, I'm afraid is why I do this. I'm the one out front who's bold. And look, it's not about talking about myself all day. It's just that I don't live in this world where I just fit into one of these little definitions that you can put me in. But shifting gears out of that, before we go to your phone calls on the situation with Donald Trump going after Hillary, and is this the fall of Hillary, let's go ahead and play this clip from Hillary, incredibly arrogant, hiding in plain view the fact that she erased her emails, had them professionally wiped. That is obstruction of justice of a felony crime, which is a felony itself, four to ten years, each count, 60 classified emails erased. We're talking about... What, 60 times 10 years? That's a lot of time. 60 times 10 years. 600. Let's say she got four years. 60 times four. We're talking about a lot of time. So this is a big deal. And then here she is to her idiot supporters, the same ones we can go out and talk to in Austin, Texas, or Mark Dice, our correspondent at markdice.com can go out and say, we want to put all gun owners in forced labor camps for Hillary. Yes, they all sign, or 80% sign on average. We want to, uh, you know, execute Christians. Yes, we, you know, they'll do anything as long as you say it's for Obama, it's for Hillary. This is a cult of weirdos. And here they are giggling at her joke about erasing emails, kind of like Lois Lerner using the IRS to persecute conservatives and libertarians. That's what Nixon did to a few people and got in trouble for. And Democrats in the past were concerned about stuff like this. Now they think being criminal is cute and funny. Very dangerous group of people. Let's go to this clip. Well, by the way, you may have seen that I recently launched a Snapchat account. Oh, how cute. I love it. I love it. Those messages disappear all by themselves. <laughs> and she puts on this big act that she's totally confident to her mindless, stupid constituents. Black unemployment has doubled under Obama. Blacks on average still worship him. Hillary has the majority of women supporting her because she's a woman. Whatever. This is identity politics gone to seed. Truly sickening. We're going to go to break. We come back. We're going to play the David Duke clip. And then, because just people said David Duke never talked about him, there's like five or six clips I found of him doing it, but I'm not going to play them all here. And, and I want to play his clips just to challenge him and tell him what I'm going to challenge on him up front when he comes on, which I don't think he's a coward. I think he will come on. And then... 
I want to just add, you can get 10% off all the high-quality water filtration systems. They're the very best systems we could find for the most affordable prices at InfoWarsStore.com and get 10% off with promo code WATER at checkout. Just put in the promo code WATER and get an additional 10% off the very lowest price. The most basic thing you can do, folks, is filter your water. In defense of human liberty, I am your host, Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I don't want to shift gears off in another subject, but I want to play this clip. Then I'll go to Alex in Edmonton, Robert in Georgia, Chris in Pennsylvania, Wild Mormon in Seattle, James in Tennessee, Paul in New Mexico, Alex in New York, Lori in Alabama, Dan in Nebraska, and many, many others interspersed with other important news I haven't covered yet on the economy, North Korea, Syria, Italy, and so many other uh, important fronts, including a volcano becoming active right by a nuclear power plant in Japan. Japan raises warning level on volcano not far away from nuclear plant Reuters. Japan is like a Godzilla movie with all the stuff that happens over there. A-bombs getting dropped on it, Fukushima blowing up, tsunamis, earthquakes. There's a reason their houses are built out of paper. So why do you build a bunch of nuclear reactors on fault lines? How about they build them on top of the active volcano? That would be safer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, at some point, it just was like a Godzilla movie here. Godzilla! Now, uh, getting back to what I was saying about uh, David Duke, I just mentioned, like, I don't get the big deal a few weeks ago about people getting so mad at David Duke, you know, with all his stuff, is because the Hispanic and black groups are all sounding like, you know, white supremacist organizations. I was being sarcastic, but it's just all the same thing. And then a caller called in about, you know, David Duke's a wonderful person, and you're basically might be a race traitor because you're not, you know, covering all this. Because it's a way to trump you, no pun intended, just to say you're a race traitor. You know, just, just say you work for X, and then whoever says it is better than you. Well, listen, I give you a gold star. All of you that hate me and claim I work for this group or that group, you are better than me. Now, can we move forward to get the fluoride out of the water? Can we move forward to cut taxes? Can we move forward to secure the borders? Can we just move forward without grandstanding? So I went and search engine, David Duke attacks Alex Jones, and found a whole bunch of different places where he did it. Spent like 30 minutes this morning trying to listen and you know find a succinct clip. Uh, and it's always, he'll be on a show going, good job to you. You understand the problems and how the world works because you agree with me. So first it's pat on the head. You you agree with me. You're now anointed by, you know, the grand poobah of uh, white supremacy about how the world really works. And then he goes into, Alex Jones wants to scare you from being politically involved and tell you you can be put in prison if you fight back. No, I say you'll be put in prison or enslaved or impoverished if you don't fight back and you have power and we're at a tipping point, but they, they are persecuting people politically and that they're tyrants. That discredits them that they're arresting and prosecuting people with the IRS and other groups like David Duke. I don't agree with David Duke's views on a lot of fronts, but I looked at his case on his tax-exempt foundation and they've gone after now mainline gun groups like they went after David Duke. And I was against the prosecution of David Duke because it was clearly political persecution. I don't care if you're some communist I don't like or David Duke. I'm going to stand up for you if you're being persecuted. So he then straw man. See, what Alex Jones would do is read a quote or play a clip of where I said, don't get involved, they'll put you in prison. But see, David Duke didn't do that. David Duke said, I said that. When that's the opposite of what I say. So I'm going to give Duke a chance to even play clips on this show when he comes on to show me where I did this and that. But don't sit there and say something if you don't have the meat and potatoes. See, I'm going to play him saying it now. I'm going to show. That's what MSNBC does. They'll go, Alex Jones influenced the Boston Bombers. Don't show where. Alex Jones is deeply racist. Don't show where. Alex Jones wants cops to get killed. Don't show where. Show me the facts. Show me the evidence. Don't just show me where I work for Israel. I mean, you know, it really sounds funny to me when I get attacked by a lot of the Israel lobby, especially on the left, to sit there and hear you and every other guy like you high horse the fact that I work for Israel. Let me tell you who probably works for the Southern Poverty Law Center or the ADL. About half the white supremacists out there have been found to. Look it up. Hal Turner, the list goes on and on. Head of the Aryan Nations. So, see, that's why they all obsess on that all day. 
Because, well, we know why, don't we? So let's go ahead now and go to the clip. Well, I'll tell you something, Tom. I think in some ways our own movement, I'll put that in quotation marks, it's not your movement, is responsible for some of this. Uh, I'll give an example. And, and because you're on the right page, you're in the whole right issue on everything, on the See, racial you're issue. You're, you understand you're, you're Zionism, the Jewish issue, and so forth. But, uh, you know, a lot of people don't. And if you look at the movement, you got Alex Jones, and you got people like David Icke, you got many others out there, and you got the so called conspiracy. And I believe that the conspiracy part of the movement actually hurt our ability to change things and to build a, a movement that, that's going to change the world and, and, and resurrect ourselves. You know, they constantly tell everyone that FEMA is getting ready to build in concentration camps and you're going to go into a concentration camp one day, that all your rights are going to be gone and then they find out that you're in a right-wing movement, you're going to be in a prison, uh, that you're liable to be killed, that right, you're going to lose right your job. Back it up 10 seconds, they say I didn't edit it. This is unedited. It's a snippet, but the front and end are cut off, but it's unedited clip. You were put in jail how many years for a tax-free deal when you clearly didn't do anything wrong? The guy on the radio saying, I'm a fear monger, was thrown in prison for his political beliefs, and that was wrong. Then we're exposing the FEMA camps and the COG and the NSA so that they can't sell the rollout of it. We're exposing they want to start a race war so George Soros can't have the race war. We're, we're not saying that, oh, run to the hills, it's all over. The elite are the ones digging in. We're here trying to get people to take action. See, from my perspective, if this stuff's happening, and it is, we need to stand up. If I hear my neighbor's house is on fire, I go call 911. I try to put the fire out with a water hose, whatever I can do, try to help my neighbor, whatever. Give them a cup of coffee while their house burns, whatever. I don't hear like, hey, your neighbor, hey, neighbor, Bob, your house is on fire. Well, you're a fear monger, Alex. Well, there's fire shooting out. I mean, I didn't burn the house down. The house is burning down. How is it fear mongering? Let's go back to the clip concentration camp one day that all your rights are going to be gone and then they find out that you're in a right-wing movement you're going to be in a prison uh that you're liable to be killed that you're going to lose your job in other words they tell us every day that the the enemy just controls everything and every pause. facet of the society we do not say the enemy controls everything we lay down so the enemy is in control we point out globalism is shutting down our jobs unfair deals we want tax cuts we tell people the problem then we give them a solution david let's go back society and you know what thomas really not true most of their power is illusory uh, we are uh, the great majority of our particular nations and our particular societies. And all we got to do is just stand up as a body. And I think most people agree with us, but we're going to tip more and more toward more people agreeing with us as times get worse. But if we believe... Hold instance, on, hold on. on the hey, pause. I thought times weren't getting worse. That was fear-mongering. See? I can't wait to get this guy on the radio. By the way, David, I have a Macedonian world conqueror first name. You have a Jewish first name. <gasps> Maybe we need to look at you. Of course, I'm being sarcastic for the New York Times runs with that. Nothing wrong with having the name David. My dad does. It's a very nice name. But David Duke has a Jewish name. Ah, you work for, you work for Netanyahu. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Jade Helm, the big uh, month-plus-long secret military operation in 10 states, supposedly ended yesterday. We have an article about something that happened during Jade Helm. We never said it was martial law. We said it was training for domestic takeover. The media lied about that. That's why they're so discredited. But special ops soldiers use rental trucks to infiltrate and occupy California town. Nobody suspected a thing. That was Jade Helm, Infowars.com, Friday the day before the last day of the operations. So we're going to be breaking that down coming up. Uh, but I do want to go to your phone calls right now. I notice callers are all over the map. Uh, all I ask is, do you think Trump's for real or not for real? Do you think it's bold that he's saying Hillary should step down and is basically a crook? It's very bold. And whether he drops out later or not, it is really hurting her and that makes me a big fan because she's a crook and has been bulletproof politically. It needs to stop. So uh, Alex in Edmonton wants to talk Trump. Wild Mormon wants to talk Trump. Uh, Chris wants to talk Trump. 
Uh, we've got uh, a bunch of other folks. Lori wants to talk Trump. Dan wants to talk Trump. Mitchell wants to talk Trump. Ronnie wants to talk Trump. Everybody else wants to talk about Ben Carson and forced inoculations uh, and, and uh, other stuff. And we'll get to you, too. But right now, Alex in Edmonton. Where is Edmonton? I forget where that's at. Canada. Hello. That's in Canada, right? Yeah, absolutely. In Alberta. Welcome. So first caller on the U.S. election is from the great north. Uh, what is your take on uh, the Trump card? Uh, well, just I, I'm remembering when uh, when he's when he was bugging Obama to show the birth certificate, and then they hauled out that kind of forgery, and then the next day Obama kills uh, Bin Laden, right? Like it just seems so scripted and everything. So I don't know. I don't know if he's for real. I really don't. I don't think he is. Well, I mean, clearly the the birth certificate was in six layers and was done in Microsoft Word. The typewriter font was a computer font, so it is a fraud. They did a fraud so obviously, so they would divert from the fact that he was from Hawaii, the son of a famous communist pornographer who he admits he lived with, um, Frank Marshall Davis. That's why he said in the law review that he was from Kenya, born there. That's why his wife said that in speeches, was so that we would just fight over the fact saying he was from Kenya when the truth it was even worse he was the son of the, one of the top KGB agents in the United States I mean you can't make this stuff up uh, so and his mom was you know a porn actress and the rest of it uh, so it's pretty bizarre stuff but I don't think you can blame Trump for being involved in the birth certificate thing but I hear you I, I don't trust him I, I think the casinos are a very dirty business that said what do you do when he's promoting stuff that is common sense, and what do you do when he starts saying Hillary's a crook? That's a game changer and makes me think he might actually be running for president. Yeah, yeah, he, I mean, he very well could be just because he's such a narcissist and he wants the power. That's definitely a possibility too, right? Like, I, it's it's weird. It really is. It's just that that's just all I was thinking about. He just seemed birth certificate thing, be like, you know, bugging Obama, bugging Obama, and then it was just like when Rumsfeld said all that money was missing, and then the next day the plane hits that side of the Pentagon, right? Like, it's just the way it comes out in the media cycle, it just everything just seems so scripted. Yeah, Rumsfeld, so CBS News, uh, 2.2 billion's missing, or excuse me, 2.2 trillion's missing, boom, 9-11 uh, happens the next day. Great point, yeah. I don't trust Trump. I am, I am impressed. Uh, and it doesn't look fake to me now, and that's why I say I may be wrong that I'm now gone from 50-50 to like 60-40. And one thing's for sure, this is not going to be a boring election. I mean, this is popcorn time. But we're eating popcorn in our own, our own destruction if this stuff goes wrong. Thank you, Alex. A great point from Canada. Chris in Pennsylvania. Chris, you're on the air. Go ahead. How you doing, Alex? Uh, love, live, live for liberty. Uh, I just want to say, I just want to give you a quick plug real quick. Your Sunday show is very powerful. If you're an uh, InfoWars subscriber and you listen during the week and you're not listening to Sunday, you're missing out. Uh, the point I wanted to make about Trump, it's, it's like you've been saying. If you'll know him by their fruits, and I think we're coming to a point in time where we're really going to see the fruit of Trump come to bear. Now, what do we know about Hillary? Hillary's a criminal. Okay, what do all criminals do? They play damage control. So it's, it's going to crystallize right, right in front of our face because what's going to happen is Hillary's going to play damage control on this. Now, if you see an attack from the Hillary clamp that attacks Trump on his character, then you know he's the real deal. If she pit, pitsy patsy foots around it and tries to keep it buddy buddy, then you know. It's all going to come to bear real soon. I, I, I would be surprised if we didn't see the fruit in the next two weeks that we're going to see whether or not if Trump is the real deal or not. Well, she's been attacking him on the Megyn Kelly situation and other issues. That's Megyn Kelly. That's what you know. That's what the mainstream media wanted. That's what Fox wanted. They wanted. Sure, you're right. Even if it sounds mean, that is a patty cake issue. Exactly, it's a patty cake issue. But if they start going back and forth on the email scandal, it's going to be some fireworks, and then we'll know by the fruit that he's the real deal. That's well, we'll know he's for real if his helicopter blows up. Oh, excuse me. We'll know he's for real if they blow his airplane up. 
Well, that's another thing too. I don't think if I don't think they'll blow his airplane up. That the reason being is if you were to kill Trump right now, it's kind of like if Obama was to kill right now. God forbid, everything that he stands on would just be crystallized, and everybody would just flock over to him. Yeah, that's the only thing that could save Obama's agenda would be for somebody to shoot him. The last thing we want is anything to happen to Obama. Absolutely. We, and, and, and I think on the flip side of the coin, the last thing the Democrats would want or liberals in general would want is that his helicopter blows out the sky because... So they're going to try to assassinate his credibility, not his person. Exactly. Once you see they assassinate his character and, and, and things of his past, they might try to judge up. That's how you know by his fruits he's real. That's, and that's how All I right. Know. Great caller. Great points. Let's take one from Robert on a candidate I like who's talked about Margaret Sanger and the Nazis and the targeting of black people, uh, Ben Carson. But th this caller, it looks like, says that he has a position on forced inoculations. I hope Carson isn't for that. Uh, let's find out right now because I like Carson. I like Rand Paul the best, but I, I like Carson, what I've seen. Uh, I'd love to elect a black president who was a patriot, not a traitor. Uh, that would bring real unity in this country. Uh, Robert in Georgia, what's your take on Carson? Yeah, I, and again, I just want to preface it by saying I don't have any problem with the color or gender if they were libertarian, constitutionalist. And yeah, I did like Ben Carson too, but I did find out last week that he he, he is against or he's for mandatory vaccinations. Well, that's a that I don't like him. I mean, I'll tell you right there, it just shows he's stupid. And I, and I don't think he's stupid. He comes off as sincere. He wants to cut taxes. He's against aborting the babies. Uh, but, man, I mean, uh, forced inoculations, that's tyranny. Yeah. Yeah, I figured you and Where did you, know. where did, guys, will you search in there, Ben Carson, on inoculations? Where did you see him say that? I mean, I believe you, but where did you see it? Yeah, Breitbart News and Newsmax.com, but when you do a Google, there's a number of them that'll pull up. I think CNN reported on it as well. Well, I missed that. Yeah, there it is, Ben Carson. No one has a right to refuse mandatory vaccinations. Wow, what a tyrant. Because, I mean, I'll tell you right now... We've never had forced inoculation for a reason. There's been so many mishaps, so many illnesses, so many side effects. They have hundreds of vaccines they want to make mandatory now. You know, when I was a kid, it was like five or six. Now it's 40-something. They got another 50 they want to get approved. Uh, th these aren't your mama's vaccines either. They're so sophisticated, and a lot of them do all sorts of weird things to your actual chemistry. They change your brain. Uh, man, that is just outrageous that he would come out and say that. Yeah. Yeah, and again, I'm not we're not trying to put you on the spot. I just heard. No, you no, thanks, it. brother. Brother, there's a reason we opened the phones up. I can't keep track of all this stuff, and so thank you, thank you so much for the call, Robert, in Georgia. All right, Wild Mormon, you're up next from Seattle. Then we're gonna go to Paul in New Mexico, James in Blunt County, Tennessee, Alex in New York, Paul, Lori, Dan. Mitchell, Ronnie, and others. Infowars.com forward slash show to find the free podcast, iPhone, Droid apps, and the video feed. And send that link out to friends and family. Wake somebody up today. Final segment, and then Lord willing, I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, with the weekday broadcast. Then, of course, there's weeknights, 7 o'clock Central, PrisonPlanet.tv. The nightly news with our great crew, Jakari Jackson, David Knight, Leanne McAdoo, and others. I also host as well special reports. You get all my films, see the nightly news, 15 cents a day, $5.95 a month. 20 people can use each membership, and it helps fund this operation. Please become a PrisonPlanet.tv nightly news member today. And if you don't want to spend $5.95 a month so 20 people can watch it and so we have a home base, that's fine. At least share the link to the free feed to the radio slash TV shows six days a week. And the free iPhone and Droid apps and podcast at InfoWars.com forward slash show. So important to get that link out and to tell locals about the AM and FM station you're listening to right now. All right, I've got like 10 callers I haven't gotten to yet. I'm going to give each person about a minute. Wild Mormon in Seattle. What's your take on Trump? Well, uh, happy hemp fest, Alex. Well, I say now more than ever that he has to be a show. The way I see it. Uh, he's plan, his plan A was to scuttle Rand Paul, and plan B is, if he does actually get elected, then to pardon whoever erased emails. That's my view on it. So you don't trust him no matter what, which I'm not blaming you. Was, I mean, he owns casinos. He's got issues. 
I hear what you're saying, but usually the Clintons are in power, man. They run Obama. They, they've got the blackmail. They've got the files. They've been in there for decades. They don't want to be destroyed. Uh, I mean, what he's doing, uh, you know, joining the bandwagon, I don't see that as a sign of him being an operative. Well, here's the thing. We're entering the end game. They're out to take us all out. It really doesn't matter if he shows his teeth now or not. And matter of fact, if you look at it the way the Satanists do, they're just rubbing our noses in it. And if he does get in, like I said, he pardons people. And no matter what, he doesn't want to be president. You can tell. Because uh, it wasn't until Biden uh, decided to get in, when Hillary started to look untenable, then he started showing his teeth. Sure. As soon as it looked like everybody turned against her and it was safe to jump in, he jumped in. But I understand that because this is a mafia you're dealing with. Um, well, we're all going to find out. I hear you. Good points. Makes me think. That's why I wanted to take the calls and get your perspective and kind of crowdsource the knowledge of the people. Um, we're going to find out, though, very, 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 very soon what's really going on here. Let's go to who's up next on this subject. Let's go to Lori in Alabama. Thanks for holding her on the air. You think Trump's for real? Hey, Alex. Thanks for taking my call. At first, I thought this situation was going to be like a Ross Perot situation. But the more that I've listened to him and just list, let, let his heart speak, he doesn't talk from a teleprompter. He's for real. He's in this to win. He's a businessman. He wants to do what's right for the country. He wants to make America great again. And I believe the man's for real. Boy, I tell you, if he doesn't deliver, if he ends up getting elected or he drops out, he's in big trouble. No, I hear you. Um, I've seen Donald Trump on TV. I followed him some, and he usually is acting like a goofball. You can tell when he's acting. He looks like he's serious, and he looks a little bit uh, not so much freaked out, but like he's committed and that something's going on. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure, but, but again, we're going to find out. I appreciate your call. Anything else? Hey, uh, thanks, for speaking, thanks for speaking up against this Jesuit evil person. Oh, yeah. Well, the Pope is calling for world government and carbon taxes. It'll kill a billion people. And he says Catholics shouldn't be worried about abortion anymore. So uh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to stand against the children. I have to criticize this new Pope. Thank you. I'm not Catholic. I don't ever bash Catholics. A lot of good Catholic people. Other Popes fought against abortion. I just, I just don't understand it. Uh, so I got to stand against it. Thank you, Lori. Uh, let's go to another caller here on Donald Trump. Uh, let's talk to Ronnie in Texas. Ronnie, you're on the air. Sir, thank you much. Uh, Trump does say uh, refreshingly rare political. All this began, I believe, really, again, uh, agreeing with your previous caller that it's all part of the hijack Dr. Rand Paul cabal. You know, the fact that we have every potential Republican candidate running now is not unrelated to this long-term scheme to sabotage Dr. Rand Paul. No, I know Rand Paul's for real, and he's busy in Haiti right now doing free eye surgery. Uh, you know, little black kids and getting no attention while everybody else is eating corn dogs at the, you know, state fair and Trump's landing in his helicopter stealing the show. I get it. Um, I just wish Rand would get more hardcore on the imploded borders because if he did that, he'd be more popular. Plus, it's constitutional. I mean, it's a libertarian position to not give people free anchor babies and, and, and free welfare to come here. Nobody else does it. It's political suicide. I appreciate your call. I do support Rand Paul. He's gone from number one to like number three or four because he's got advisors that have allowed Trump to trump him. And he's got advisors telling him to attack Trump when he should be neutral on it. He should be out trumping Trump. And I say that because I care about Rand Paul and know he's for real and know he'd make a great president. Then maybe he could have Trump as the secretary of, uh, of uh, the treasury or something. Uh, thank you so much for that call. Let's talk about Rand Paul some. Paul in New Mexico wants to talk about Rand Paul. You're on the air. Yeah, I think I got a campaign slogan for Rand Paul. I don't pay for favors. I ask for favors. You know, in that first debate when Chris Christie uh, blasted Paul for uh, for putting up uh, 30 minutes after the, the, whatever, he said something about 30 minutes. He posted to his website, uh, well, this is a way to take down Chris Christie because, um, you know, so anyways, I don't know if you understand what I'm no, saying. No, I don't, but, but, uh, but I'm ignorant of it. But, I mean, I watched the debate, but um, look, 
Rand Paul needs to get nationalistic and populistic and not just sit there and be a policy wonk debating the finer intricacies of an Iran deal. People have been dumbed down on average. He needs to reach out to those people. He's got intellectual libertarians and conservatives supporting him. He needs to, you know, really get out there and just dominate with incendiary comments. That's what it takes because we're in an incendiary situation. We're in an extreme situation. Thank you, Paul. Let's go ahead and talk to Dan in Nebraska. Dan, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Very much, Alex. Um, I had a, a. I think Trump is a narcissist, but I also wanted to uh, talk to you about Reverend Pinckney in Benton Harbor, who's being held in prison for uh, uh, First Amendment exercising his First Amendment rights. Now, on, on Trump, I I think that uh, he's doing a lot of good because he's got the GOP fighting against each other. So I think that's really good. I think he's going to do a lot of damage to both Republicans and Hillary Clinton before he's done. So that's that's all right with me. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I don't see him helping the Democrats right now is all I'm saying. I, I don't I don't see it right now. I, I wonder if we'll see it in the future. But I, I like that he's taking shots at Hillary Clinton. Can I tell you about uh, Reverend Pinckney and Benton Harbor? Yeah, who is this? This is um, a, a, a Baptist minister. He was organizing... Um, against uh, the privatization of public land in Benton Harbor. He was working against the Whirlpool Corporation and the Upton family there. Okay, and what happened? And, well, he was arrested for uh, uh, voter fraud. They, they uh, uh, said that he falsified uh, information on a, on a ballot petition. But uh, this gentleman's been working against... Uh, he, he's, he's, All right, we'll look into it. We'll look into it, I promise you, Dan. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and talk to... Uh, Mitchell, Mitchell in Oregon, go ahead. Donald Trump, Donald Trump is a narcissist and a uh, a businessman mafia. I mean, he works at very high levels of business. Now, he's he's like a monster. He's a tough guy in in business. Now, what does that mean for us? It could be a good thing. I don't think for a minute he cares about the general public, but where he sees the eugenicist elites are destroying humanity, he can see that would bring down his financial empire. Like yes. The power he has would diminish. So as a self-interested narcissist, he would want to stop that. To maintain well, but I mean, listen, I think they overuse this narcissist thing in psychology and say everybody's a narcissist. Whatever happened to male confidence and dominance, that's normal for the species. And so to sit, I mean, show me someone who's successful who doesn't have a little bit of uh, chutzpah, bravada, whatever you call it. Uh, but I hear you. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, what you have is fake narcissists that live in their mother's basements and are delusional about being successful and play video games all day. I want to find real people that, that want to empower America and the world. And, and I agree with you that I think that may be what's happening with Donald Trump. I absolutely agree with you. Where do you think all this is going? Well, unfortunately, um, I think Donald Trump is a puppet the same way that ISIS is a puppet. Basically, his ego is being played off of by the elite. So, so, so he's real and sincere, but they still have a plan for him down the road. And I think that may be what's happening is why the media started promoting him, even as they attacked him. But that may blow up in their face because the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. I'm sorry to Alex, James, and others. We'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing, 11 a.m. Central, with a weekday edition of the InfoWar. Great job to the crew, affiliates and sponsors and listeners. I'm signing off until tomorrow. Infowars.com. We'll see you.